Hello everyone and welcome to 40 Questions. My name is Stephen Walker and today I am interviewing Igor Gaponov. That's right. Hi everyone. Welcome Igor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, first question, Igor, if they didn't know by your name, where are you from? I am from Mother Russia. Mother Russia. And where on the planet is Russia? Well, Russia is actually it's in both in Europe and in Asia and it occupies the whole northern part of Asia and northeastern part of Europe. So do you say Europe and Asia or Eurasia? Uh, one third is in Europe but technically Russia is in Europe. Mm -hmm. So all the international like, diplomatic events and sports competitions, Russia participates as a European member. European. So it's technically Europe. Europe. Okay. And what nationality are people from Russia? Uh, well, Russia has so many nationalities, both local tribes and predominant nationalities, but most, maybe more over 70% are like uh, Slavic, Eastern Europe. No, Russians and then of course we okay. have many different others but if I were to say this is my friend from Russia he is just Russian Russian <laughs> yeah right that's, that's what you probably will okay tell. I got it <laughs> and what is the population of Russia uh, I believe the population of Russia is about 145 50 ish million people so it's 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 one of the largest in the world really isn't it? It's probably it's in top 10. Top 10. Most likely, yeah. Yeah. And the capital city? The capital city is Moscow. Moscow or in Russian? In Russian it's Moscow. Moscow. Yes. And what is the population of Moscow? And Moscow is about uh, 12, 13 million people I guess depends on how you count. Right. So around 12 million people. And you are from what part? I'm uh, from a s every size town named Kursk. It's Kursk. about 500 kilometers to the south from Moscow. It actually borders on Ukraine. Okay, so I am so relative from the south. Kind of the southwestern yep. part of Russia? Yep. So I'm due south from Moscow. All right. Okay. Uh, in Unit 2, we talk about shapes, sizes, and appearances. Igor, your flag. Uh, the flag of Russia. What color is the flag? So the flag has uh, three colors. The top stripe is white, the middle one is blue, and the bottom one is red. Okay, and so question seven is what does the flag look like? You've it's, already described it's just it a little a, bit. It's just a like tricolor tri tricolor flag with the three equally wide horizontal stripes. Horizontal stripes. Yep. Now, Russia, again, I know it, it, it's a huge country and it has many different ethnicities in it, but if we were to travel to Russia, um, what does the majority of women and men look like from that country? Mm, I'd say that um, in the, probably in the middle, in around Moscow, most people have probably blonde hair or lighter color hair. and. Uh, they're relatively tall, like taller than probably average. Mm -hmm. And then closer to the south, like closer to Ukraine, there will be more like dark hair, black okay. hair people. And then if you go towards the Caucasus, then the highland area, then the people there will look different, maybe more like uh, Italian, Italians like this, like darker, shorter height, but like wider shoulders and uh, darker curly hair. Okay. And then if you go to the east, towards Siberia, when there will be local, many local tribes and ethnicities, and they will look more like uh, Asian and Mongol ethnicities. Right, so good variety. Yeah, there is a lot of different ethnicities going on. And question 10 is about minorities. Can you tell us a few minorities that live in Russia? Sure. Then. Uh, uh, say there are so many different cultures mm -hmm. and then uh, say to the in the south part near the Caucasus there is a there are several actually quite a few million of people who whose religion is uh, Muslim, uh, who are Muslims okay. right and then though, though they have very different culture and then uh, to the east from Moscow in the middle there is also a big uh, mm, traditionally Muslim area 
is a Tatarstan and the capital is Kazan it's a very it used to be a capital of the one of the chunks of the Mongol horde back in the time uh -huh. when it evolved into it became you know Islamic and then there was always like a crusades and conquests from like so this group is known as what, what's the so they're Tatars okay Tatars. Tatars yeah so and when there was a Mongol invasion it was Mongol and Tatars so they were a part of this invasion force back in like 13th century invading uh, mainland Okay. Russia and so on and then it was reconquered back from by the you know Moscow Moscovites in 15th 16th century and been uh, embedded into Russia but it's, a, it's like a it's a separate it's an autonomous republic so they have their own laws and lots of freedoms and obviously mosques and it looks very I haven't been there but it looks very beautiful and very different okay all right that's very interesting in unit 3 we talk about food tastes and ingredients Igor, can you tell us one traditional food from Mother Russia? I think they will have to be borscht. Borscht. And so, what are the ingredients of borscht? So, this is a soup mm -hmm. that is made of uh, vegetables and meat. And it has potatoes, um, onions, a little bit of fr like fried carrots before, and then you can use any meat really but the key ingredient is beet beets is what it makes it uh, red like a very purplish color kind of like this kind chair. of and this is also what I think keeps most foreigners away from it from you know because they are they're really scared that it will be turn out very spicy or something uh -huh. like that but yeah it's a very unnatural color and uh, we don't have many other foods that are colored that way in so Russia. <laughs> you, so Russia in Russia you you they grow a lot of beets or it's a uh, actually I think it maybe comes from from Ukraine or like okay. from the southern parts probably right. uh, more traditional because yeah the, definitely there are lots of farming and vegetable growing going uh -huh. on in the south parts and borscht I've I've tried borscht before but for those that haven't how does borscht taste well this is a very uh, interesting thing because also <laughs> uh, obviously it like depends it on who makes tastes, it tastes yeah on on with bead and like it's just because there's there are so many people who cook it differently right and then the way you so eat let's, it so let's let's yeah. think about your mom's borscht okay can so, you describe how that tastes yeah so obviously it tastes great Right. Tastes, so, right. <laughs> so yeah, it will taste with uh, with beet and potatoes, and of course the meat. Many people like to add, say, sour cream okay. and stuff. So it it becomes it has the extras like it gains extra texture and uh, right. different flavors depending on what you add and like black pepper and stuff. And so beet, I know how just like beet juice tastes, and if if your I've mom is that. when your mom was <laughs> cooking. Um, Borscht. Yeah. How, what do you remember the smell to be like? So first, before cooking, like did you, you know she was making borscht? Oh yeah, you can okay. tell because you first you have to like fry the stuff, the ingredients. Uh -huh. So like you 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 know you peel the beads and you cut them and then you add uh, like you know carrots and other stuff and you have to fry them and of course it like it makes this you know sound and it smells quite you know pleasantly with the veggies and stuff so you could probably tell what's going on and it's actually making the borscht is quite a long process because you have to like you know fry stuff before like it'll take you a couple hours to, to okay. cook it's not a fast food all right so it's a slow food mm -hmm. and so question 15 is the texture uh, what does what is the texture like of borscht it's a uh, quite dense it's soup dense. with lots of stuff going on and obviously you have potatoes cut up and beet and cabbage mm -hmm. sometimes they they add a lot of filling but it's so not it's not crunchy it's it's more of a soft yes. taste to the yes to the, you, you cannot almost the feel the beet at all yeah it's you basically can feel the potatoes mainly and meat okay yeah. all right moving on to unit four weather seasons and landscapes like my homeland the united states it's huge and russia is another huge country but can you give us a basic description what is the landscape like if we mm -hmm. maybe start in the west and go to the east all right so uh First and foremost, Russia occupies like one seventh of the world land, wow. world's land, mm -hmm. I think. So you can really find 
uh, you know, lots of variety, both go, both going from west to east and from north to south. Right. But in the west, uh, if you start from like Kaliningrad and from the western, I mean west to Moscow, it's like if you go right through the middle, then it will be. Uh, th there'll be like you know meadows mixed in with the wooden areas, and then if you go more to the to, to towards the north, like it'll get really forestry. Like there will be lots of like you know old pine forests, with, dense forests. Yes, very very dense with mm -hmm. lots of wild wildlife in them, and almost no open areas. Okay. And then uh, if you go to the south in the European part, then you'll go through the forests towards those like mixed in hilly areas, like the part of where I come from. We have smooth, very smooth old hills with maybe like 100, 200 meter tall tops with lots of open areas and occasional forests. And okay. then if you go more to the south, you'll move into something called steppes. Okay. Uh, with a very little vegetation and like very low grass and lots of big areas and like pastures open, open, open land. yeah open open land and then if you go more to the south you'll come to more the, to the south how far to down the south Caucasus mountains it's like between Russia and Iran okay uh, like right. they'll be very tall almost like all alpine style mountains like 5500 meters tall wow. with the you know with the snow caps and all and all mm -hmm. so it's a very different landscape and then if you What's move from west to south, then you go all the way to the Ural Mountains. And the, the Ural Mountains okay. is the natural border that divides the Europe from Asia. Okay. Like uh -huh. this is the normal way to divide, which goes from the like, uh, you know, polar ocean all the way down to the south to right. the Caspian Sea and uh, Kazakhstan. And then if you go more to the west, you'll have the western part of Siberia. West Cybe or east? Oh, sorry, east. We're going east. Yes. Then you'll have the western Siberia. Okay. Which will be more of a like a lowland with lots of forest forestation. And then again, from north to south, you'll have like lots of variety, but it's very forestry and you know much fewer people live there. Mm. And then if you go more to the east, you'll go to like more highland uh, areas okay. with uh, lots of you know, mountains covered with uh, forests, and basically it's one huge forest, and very few and that, people live in the Siberia. north. Siberia. Siberia is very, very big, yes. Right. And then all the way in the east, there are areas which are very similar to Iceland. Like in Kamchatka Peninsula, they have like those dormant volcanoes and active volcanoes. You have you have, so you have volcanoes yeah. in the east. And there was hazers and like, you know, natural spas with hot water and like... Right. I heard it's pretty it's pretty otherworldly and and quite difficult to get to I would imagine yeah probably you cannot get there by any any other means but plane or maybe ferry right yeah, but okay seasons mm -hmm. how many seasons are in Russia how many would you say so in the area where I come from and say Moscow mm -hmm. uh, we have pretty you know four very distinct Seasons, so you can tell okay. really easily, and they're most of all, uh, mostly they're like you know equally three months each okay. space. So it's right. a very common, like uh, you know textbook kind of seasons with you know spring and autumn being a bit chilly and winter being colder. And then, yeah, you know, obviously in the north there are parts of Russia that never have summer, and then some parts of Siberia they the people joke that. We have a very good climate. We have, you know, we, we have just 11 months of winter and the rest is summer. <laughs> and then, yeah, all the way down in the, to the south, like near the Caucasus Mountains, there are regions which are very, which almost get no snow. And in, they are very similar to say, south of France in okay. climate with their own like vine yards and so vine, pr wine production. So and good uh, vineyards and which which part of it? Is yeah, it's like a south, and especially like in the countries like Southern Georgia, south southwestern, south southwestern, yeah, western between area. the black near the on the border of Black Sea. Okay, it's uh, it's okay. very close to Turkey, so it, it it's really warm and it's a popular resort area and have among you been, the Russians. Have you been there? Oh yeah, multiple times. And, it's and the wine is and the wine is good, and you can buy it anywhere in Russia basically because it's exported. Okay, well I'll have to try that someday. You should. What was your favorite season uh, growing up in Kursk? Oh, it's got to be the summer. Summer? Obviously. So what can you describe what was the weather like in the summer? 
Well, right. first and foremost, a Russian vacation from school is three months, which spans wow. from June to, to the end of August. That's okay. why probably most kids love summer. Okay, that's true. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, the weather is like, uh, you get maybe, on average, it's like 25 to 30 degrees, and it's uh, not too humid. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like moderately continental climate. Right. right? So it's, it's really comfortable, and you can get suntan very easily, and it's not too humid, so we don't really get that many rains there is no rain season or anything it's a very open area and mm -hmm. uh, you can get an occasional like a week of rains and then you right. have a week of heat but, but no monsoons or it's no no nothing like that this is pleasant. definitely un uncommon uh, what natural disasters are mm. found throughout mother russia so uh, of course, because we have so many forests, then forest fires are right. uh, very common in the dry seasons, mm -hmm. like this year has been a pretty big one and all the way in Siberia. Okay. And it's very hard to put them out because also so few people live there. Yeah, and then it's a, it's a problem. We don't really get any earthquakes or tornadoes that I've heard of. We can have uh, like occasional strong hail that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. destroys the crops. And then maybe in the areas next to, like in, a, in Kamchatka and near Japan, there might be like occasional earthquakes. Also, there used to be a few like uh, volcano eruptions in that area, but again, it's not. It's, Most it's of not the volcanoes are dormant now. Uh, I think there are some active, but uh, just there are not so many people living there, so you can't really tell. Yeah. And also, there are some earthquakes in this Caucasus Mountains because they're like young and uh, active, but it's again, it's not something that happens too often. And then, obviously, Siberia, cold. What natural disasters follow mm. that climate? Blizzards are very common. Right. Yeah, and even in the area where I come from, I mean, you may get occasionally like heavy snowfall and, and uh, ice, ice and, storms. And ice storms. And for example, in Siberia, in many of their apartment buildings, even many floors, the doors they open inwards, not outwards. Uh, because why is if that? It, if it snows too much, there is no way to exit the house. You have to jump out from the second floor very, to clean up the snow. So you have to open them inside. Very clever, Russia. Well, you have to learn to survive. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't learn, you don't survive. Or well, you have to jump from the second floor, which is... <laughs> well, then unpleasant. you jump into a nice snow drift with your skis and you ski off to work. Fair enough, unless there is a pile of bricks forgotten <laughs> by someone and you don't go there for <laughs> Okay. Um, Question 20, holidays. What would you say is an important holiday in Russia? Oh, I gotta say it's, it has to be the New Year. New Year? Like the New Year as in uh, December 31st to January 1st, that New Year night. Okay. This has to be definitely easily the biggest holiday in Russia. It's also probably because it is followed by like a 10 day okay vacation period. Oh, okay, all right. So, yes, yeah, like a holiday period of um, at least a week. What would be a few things that are typical at New Year's Eve and if there's anything during the New Year's Day that Russians practice? Okay, so normally uh, you'd spend uh, the New Year's Eve like over at your friends or inviting them over to your house. Okay. And, uh, of course, like you would cook a lot and there would be lots of food on the table mm -hmm. and there would be a Christmas tree in the corner. Okay. Of course. So and then you, so you do have the Christmas tree. So yeah, there would be a tree as well, pretty much like in the West. Mm -hmm. But then uh, like when the clock strikes 12, uh, like say in the US, I know you watch the ball drop, right? Yeah, then Times in, Square. Then in Russia, there is always like a you know, two minutes or three minutes to midnight, there is an address from the president. Okay. To the, you know, so everyone like watches the TV and then mm -hmm. there is like a, in Moscow, there is Kremlin castle, and there is a big, uh, like a watch tower or clock tower. Okay. And so like it's the, when the clock strikes 12, like it shows the current time. So this is officially the new year. So it always follows the address of the president. And usually you wait until the, the clock strikes 12, it the clock it, it it really goes for a long time this the whole melody and stuff so and then you drink to the you know and hope that the new year will be better than the old one right okay Igor getting into unit five which is ports transportation and accommodation 
Question 21. If we were flying into Russia, what is the main or one of the main international airports in Russia? So the main hub uh, got to be Moscow. Okay. And Moscow has three uh, international airports. Okay. Uh, but there are two probably which are slightly bigger. One is Sheremetyevo and one is the other one is Damodedova. So the first one is? Sheremetyevo. It's in the north uh, west of Moscow. Okay. And the one in the southeast is called Damodedova. Okay. And so let's say we, we fly into Moscow to mm -hmm. one of those two and from Moscow we want to explore parts of uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. What are some modes of transportation that we can find? Uh, probably one of the most uh, popular means of traveling among, especially among, among the foreigners, is actually the Trans-Siberian Railroad right. okay. that goes all the way from like Moscow in the west to Vladivostok in the east mm -hmm. and it's uh, like a seven day uh, train ride. It's amazing. And it goes through many like bigger cities on the way and of course you can see lots of you know beautiful nature and uh, you know natural wonders like the Lake Baikal and lots of forests and yeah it's I heard it's a pretty interesting experience. You've never tried? You've never been on it? I've never tried but I've seen I, I've talked to many people who did it and most of them liked it. And the trains are, are comfortable enough? Yeah and most trains in Russia are sleeping trains because okay. the distances are yeah. so big yeah so like you normally you'd buy a, like a uh, it's a compartment with a two bunk beds and like so there right. are four people in it and it's very common like once you get in very common it, it takes more than a day to travel somewhere in russia so you would like meet the other per people and socialize become and play friends become and friends and suddenly be drinking some maybe vodka you know, play card games definitely share exchange stories it's right. a, it's a culture it's oh. a train cover culture yeah that, that sounds interesting to me uh, okay, trains, and then if we were to go up into Siberia, how would we explore some of that land? If you want to go somewhere more to the north, then uh, there are helicopter rides, and uh, of course there are many big rivers, so you can take a boat okay. to go uh, like on a boat cruise. So, so basically, just people don't really go up there. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty pristine environment still? Uh, yes, in Russia it's very easy to find the areas where you probably would be the first person to ever step in. Wow. And uh, there will be many that's, like... That's, that's great to hear actually. Natural wonders that no one ever heard of. Okay, um, moving into question 23. You can choose the city. What would be a nice hotel that uh, a traveler can stay at in Russia? My favorite one would be maybe uh, it's called Aglaya. It's in, in Aglaya. It's in Saint Petersburg. Okay. It's, it's a smaller Petersburg. hotel, and it's uh, it was really really quiet and conveniently located, and it had great staff and great food. So I really enjoyed staying there. And question twenty five. Uh, I'm sorry. Question twenty four mm -hmm. is about amenities. Do you remember some amenities that were offered at this hotel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. They offered a free breakfast okay. and, uh, of course, Wi-Fi on the spot. And they also had dry cleaners and such. Okay. And question 25 is talking about currency. The currency of Russia is... Ruble. We call it ruble. Russian the, the ruble. ruble. Yes. And do you know what the exchange rate of the ruble is to the American dollar? Uh, currently it is about 55 rubles for per, for one dollar. Okay, and are there any special or specific people that we can find on the ruble? Uh, unlike uh, say US dollars mm -hmm. where you have the portraits of people, okay. right? In Russian rubles they put the cities, the photos of the famous cities okay. or like landmarks in Russia. All so right. you would find like Kremlins and uh, you know like statues of some people from say northern parts like Arhangelsk or you know certain monuments on okay. those rubles. So it's like uh, you take a small trip around Russia and it says the name of the city on the bank now. All right, that's itself. interesting. Unit 6, greetings, gestures and customs. This is one of my favorite units actually. I'm in Russia. What greeting should I use when I when I'm walking around? 
So if you want to be formal to people, the mm -hmm. most formal greeting we have is Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Yes, it, it means you, you wish the person in front of you good health. Okay. So Здравие in Russian здоровье is health. So this is like a very formal way to... Now I know Nastrovia. Nastrovia is... is yeah. It, they're they're related. Similarity to it. Yep. Nastrovia. Yep. So they have a, they have the same stem. Здравствуйте. Okay, it means be healthy or I wish you health. And that that's the most common. Yes, this is the most common that you would talk to a stranger. Okay. And with a friend? With a friend you can say привет. Привет it means hi. Okay. Yeah, this is informal. Now question 27 gestures. Body hand gestures. What are some gestures that uh, are appropriate that we can use in Russia? So say handshake is handshake. very common when you meet someone. Right, and then, so, yep, so it's a regular handshake. Привет. Yes. Say, if you come to work, you would normally shake hands every morning. Oh, you do? With people. Like, yeah, so it's not like you, something that you do in the first time. It's a common thing. Like, say, students, when they get together for the classes in the morning, they would normally shake hands. Okay, and that's men, interesting. Men would shake hands. Like, it's not common for, for girls. Girls normally don't shake hands with each other. So, men with other, with men, other men will shake hands. Yes. Men and women don't shake each other's hands. Uh, it's I would say it's not really common. Okay. That and then women with other women, they would like just kiss each other on cheeks or something like that. Okay. Now the next question is impolite gestures. What are some gestures that are impolite that we should not do? Hmm. Uh, like pointing fingers at someone. One like finger. I mean, pointing like that at is someone. At this someone. Is rude is considered rude okay. yeah like obviously the probably most of those gestures that are implied in the west would be the same in russia like you know such as such as giving a middle finger the middle finger the middle finger That's is implied. kind of a universal one i guess yeah i heard that in some parts of the world that also is impolite but in Maybe russia Greece it means or good some, no, or that, iran that, that or something in iran I, i'm almost oh, sure okay. it's it means that but in russia this is a very good gesture that you show to someone when you yeah. really appreciate them so same in the united states yep now question 29 is about customs uh, for example in korea it's it's uh not polite to wear shoes in the house mm -hmm. are there any specific customs in russia that we should know about before going the shoes is definitely a thing for russia as well okay like we always and there was always a place in every apartment to take off, off you know, your shoes and okay. put them somewhere. That's good so to know. We never wear shoes indoors. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for example, uh, pouring drinks to yourself is, you know, that's a no-no. It's, no? it's a no-no kind of thing. And but say in like Korea, where you pour drinks while holding the glass, in Russia, it's the exact opposite. So you would, your glass have to sit firm on the table so when you, you don't pour touch a drink. the glass, and then you would pour me a drink. Normally, like if you want just to help me you out, you would just take your pick up your glass and put it closer to me on the table, okay. and like and I would pour a drink to you and then give it back to you. Okay. And vodka is drunk one shot. Always. One shot always. Like you no you, sipping. No. Nope. Even a nice high dollar. The Russians don't drink that. I just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they usually you drink small shots, but and it's so always if I a one shot. Drink is what would we say? Like in cheer in America, we say cheers and. Uh, in Russia, there isn't really, really uh, like a There's one a, word for no? it. Like you can say nasdarovia. Nasdarovia. Or vaše zdravie means your health. Vaše zdravie. Vaše zdravie. Yes, but normally Russians love to toast, to give, to tell toasts. Okay. They so can, can be short, too long. Can you can you tell me a Give us a toast. Uh, well, in Russian, it depends. But say in uh, New Year. Okay, give us a New Year's toast in say, Russian. Поздравляю всех с новым годом и желаю вам всего самого лучшего в наступающем новом году. And then с новым годом. С новым годом. And then you Happy drink. New Year. Yes, exactly. Right. Perfect. Very and then good. you drink. Excellent. <laughs> Question thirty is religion. What religions are practiced in Russia? The majority. Uh, the main religion is uh, Christian mm -hmm. religion, but unlike the West, it's called an Orthodox. Orthodox. So it's an Orthodox uh, Christian religion. Okay. 
of course there are muslims in uh, there are mosques in uh, most big right. bigger cities okay but uh, normally like uh, like i said before in the southern part of russia near the caucasus mountains like some some regions there are like purely muslim like right. 99 percent okay. and of course there are parts of russia with, that have lots of buddhism closer to mongolia yeah china and judaism as well yeah so right. they're like all religions there are many reasons which i represented in right. russia i would but say predominantly it's orthodox christian yes Okay, Igor, Unit 7 is Landmarks, Activities, and Things to Do. Question 31, where is a good place to go sightseeing in Russia? So if you like, uh, like city architecture, then okay. definitely you have to visit either Moscow or St. Petersburg. Granted, they're very different, like St. Petersburg is more like an Italian style Venice almost with like channels and stuff and okay. Moscow is more of a it will give you more of a like Russian pure Russian flavor Okay, if you like say if you like nature Then if you just like picnics then basically any city sure. you just go out and there are so many rivers and like meadows and forests Many Russians enjoy getting out and into nature Definitely like when Part the summer the comes it's a very common to go to some like riverside and like bring a barbecue with you okay. And like a roast some you know a, a, a nice right. barbecue and swim in the river and then yeah like you know many Russians go mushroom picking in the forests and okay yeah all right so yeah, it's a pretty good, good for recreation mm. and landmarks can you give us uh, maybe one or two famous landmarks that we can find or if we see it we say that mm. is Russia it's got to be the Kremlin, the Kremlin, and the Saint Basil's Cathedral with those domes made of mm -hmm. different color Saint tiles. Saint Basil, it's, yeah, Saint Basil's Cathedral. Saint Basil's, and that is in. Uh, it's actually inside the Kremlin, it's surrounded by the Kremlin walls. Okay, and the it's, Kremlin surrounds Saint Basil, and it sits right on the on the right on the red square. So okay. once you come through the Kremlin walls, you go a little bit up, and you are in the red square. I see. And then you, it's like there is a mausoleum where Lenin. Yeah, you know, okay. resides and there uh -huh. is the St. Basil's Cathedral and then yeah, so it's it's very close and there's shopping area and museums around and yeah. Right. So so that's Moscow. It's in Moscow. And can you can you give us another landmark from another part of uh, Russia? Then say for Siberia it has to be a lake Baikal. Okay. Which is one like the deepest lake and uh, that's fresh water. It's fresh water and maybe like the biggest freshwater reservoir on planet Earth. Wow. It's like sixteen hundred meters deep. Wow, it's wow. basically sits in a huge crevice between the mountains and they have their own kind of seals that's you know only unique to that area. Okay. And they have the water is so clear then you can see with no special equipment for like three or thirty meters deep and the ice when you walk it's kind of spooky because you can see the fish in ah, okay. the bottom because yeah, the so ice clear. is so pure That's amazing. And, and you can drive a car in it and the ice naturally would have so many cracks yeah. that it would feel give you chills but <laughs> it's a really good experience adventure yep hey you gotta you gotta have some adventure in your life you have to <laughs> speaking of adventure uh the next question is activities so what are some activities that people can do uh, when we come and visit russia or that russian people enjoy uh, I'd say it has to be very different depending on the season. Sure. Right then in the summer, many people like to be, you know, frolicking in the sun and swimming in rivers. And mm -hmm. mainland Russia, we don't have that many seas available to us. Like this, you know, they're quite far, so it's right. much more common to swim in the river. Okay. Or like in the fresh water. Mm -hmm. you know like reservoirs and lakes and then of course like as i said barbecuing and like you know just playing sports outside and then in in the in autumn uh like many people enjoy you know going like berry picking or mushroom picking in the forest and maybe hunting and uh, fishing mm -hmm. and then in the winter of course uh, many people love you know skiing cross-country skiing cross-country skiing again because like the area in, around moscow and we don't have that many mountains so right. we don't really do any mountain skiing. yeah so it's more flat cross-country yeah type there skiing. are like decent hills that the you know kids love to li ride sledges down and okay. this is a very common thing as a kid you play snowballs and all kinds of winter stuff ice hockey ice skating right uh what activity Personally, what what activity do you enjoy doing when you like in Ru when you were maybe a child or mm. young adult in Russia? Uh, well, when I was a kid, uh, I was a regular kid, I guess. I enjoyed playing soccer, okay, and a lot. And then 
of course in the summertime there are lots of stuff you could do and then like you would just you could pick apples climb the trees and pick stuff because it gets very warm and we have so much fresh fruit and berries on okay. the trees and so, so that, that's the question where is a good okay. place to do an activity that you enjoy um, so you, yeah you mentioned going out and picking mushrooms and and berries mm -hmm. can people just wander out and things are free to, to pick yes sure and many people do more to the north you'll have much more a bigger variety of mushrooms because they grow in the forests right and to the south where I, I come from there are like fewer mushrooms but more say wild strawberries and like all this kind of and different herbs okay. which people also love to collect yeah. and like use dry and use for tea and yeah. you know make tea with and lots of collect other stuff so. sounds like a great pastime and obviously healthy healthy one okay um people watching igor where would you say in russia where is a good place to go people watching for example say mass moscow subway oh, is okay. a really you know great place to visit because it's built in a very different way from say the us mm -hmm. it was built as a as an like exhibition project so it has like arts uh you okay. know all over it and like beautiful big you know holes and there are lots of really quality bands like street bands who usually play there and you can like listen to say classic music there as well okay. as long with rock and stuff and of course in the main like tourist streets where lots of like tourist shopping there will there'll be also many bands All entertaining right. the crowd but I think if you want to also it's it'll be very interesting to see the like uh, Russian countryside okay. if you move away a little bit mm -hmm. to the smaller cities and probably find if you can find someone local to drive you around and you can see lots of like folklore and different clothes and different traditions which will be very special to Russia all right sounds good that's what I like to hear yep all right Igor it's unit 8 already unit 8 is um, music pop culture and famous people question 36 is about music what kinds of music are popular in Russia these days or when you were growing up I think it's more like pretty much everywhere else in the world like yeah. pop music now pop music is everywhere of course so pop popular so yep. like you have your own form like k-pop korean pop j-pop american pop you have a russian pop that is popular or probably i like i was never into that kind of music so i, I don't really know if there were like a special flavor to it right but there is a, such a term as a russian rock okay yeah so there are lots of rock bands and you know as well which are also very popular and mm -hmm. probably much like to the you know in the u.s and right. so on yep is there any kind of traditional russian music that we sh could know about or should know about yeah of course there is a you know, lots of like folklore folk music and okay. russian traditional musical instruments like balalaika which is like a three-string guitar okay and uh, still like if you go more towards maybe you know like the villages you can see people playing those with harmonicas and stuff but right. uh, they're they're not really popular these days among okay. the city population so hardly anyone know any of the songs anymore or That's sings a to shame them. yep this part of tradition is waning a little bit and famous people what famous people are from russia can you give us maybe two or three people that you'd like oh, us yeah. to know about it would be very hard to choose because yeah, like, know, Russia has so many areas. Long history, huge country. Yeah, and then say it's Russia is very famous for its arts, okay. like music, ballet. So there are so many famous composers like Tchaikovsky, okay. for example, who wrote the The Swan's Lake, The Nutcracker, and all mm -hmm. those ballets. And yeah, of course, that was very famous. And yes, like uh, you know, end of 19th, beginning of 20th century. Okay, uh, quite a few popular scientists. For example, the table of chemical elements was developed by a Russian scientist named Mendeleev. So Mendeleev. Yeah, so he invented this allegedly while he was asleep and he visualized came that. Came to and, him in the dream. And yeah, like this organization. So he came up with that and that's what all the Russian school children grow to learn. Okay. Like in eighth and ninth grade. Yeah, so right, then so, so music and science how about one more different a different field russian literature is russian very literature. Like for example leo tolstoy right, right. war and peace huge, and huge so name. on Anna Karenina, yeah, everyone huge book 
<laughs> four of them, yeah, four did volumes. Did you ever read it? Uh, yes, I did. You did? Uh, it's like a mandatory program in, in like a literature okay. class in wow. school, so... Good on you. And who is the president or the leader of Mother Russia these days? The president of Russia is and will be and will Vladimir be. Vladimirovich Putin. His name is Putin. His second name is Putin, yes. And, and so why? Why do you say will be? Is there uh, no election in Russia? There is an election there is. every six years. Okay. Yeah, but as of now, there are no real uh, opponents that can tackle him because he's very popular among the population. And Putin, when when did he first become president? Do you know the? Do you? He first was uh, like nominated president by the previous president into the year of 2000, and then he was re-elected later this year. And then he was a president for two terms until 2008. Okay, subcultures. Question 39 is, are there any unique subcultures in Russia? I presume so. I would say that, mm, of course, music-wise, there are mm. lots of like rock guys and, you know, emo guys and goth guys. And emo? Yeah. What's emo? Emo is like, uh, you know... I am or E-M-O? E-M-O is called emo. Is that so emotional? Yes. Okay. It's like people who listen to like a more tender kind of sign of rock. A ballad type song. Mm, maybe. Kind maybe. of. Like with the guys, usually with like a longer hair and like a... Like girls also like, you know, with eye, lots of, you know, black under their so, eyelashes. So emo and, and so goth are a bit similar, maybe. Pro but goth are like more on the darker side, maybe, okay. where the emos are more like on the sensitive side okay. thing. All right. Look, look alike, I don't know. Okay, I'm we'll, we'll check out the emos. All right. And the last question, Igor, you ready? Yep. Question 40. Okay. It is the national flower. Does Russia have a national flower? I'm not sure about the flower, but or the national tree national has to be a birch tree. Birch. A birch tree, the white one with the black, you know, inlets in it. So, okay. allegedly, all Russians who immigrate immigrate from Russia, they, they miss those trees because they're pretty common in Russia. All right. But I think they're pretty much common anywhere, really. Maybe they look a little bit different. Yes. Okay. Спасибо. Пожалуйста. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. You're welcome. And, uh, Thank it was you. It a good education for me, and I hope uh, it was a good education for everyone that viewed this. And until next time, my name is Stephen Walker, and this is 40 Questions.